Doctor Who is one of my all time favourite TV shows and one thing I like about it is that you can see the progression of science fiction as a genre by watching it. The show starts off as a B-movie style pulpy show and changes as time goes by. The classic series has obvious influences throughout its run such as the space race in the 1960s, Hammer Horror in the mid 1970s and Star Wars in the late 1970s and early 1980s. The new series, i.e. the post-2005 series however, is a much greater cooking pot of influences, ideas and concepts. Recently, whilst watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer and its spin-off show Angel, I realised many similarities that Doctor Who post-2005 shares with the Buffy universe, often short onto the Buffyverse. As a result, I noted them all down and did some research to produce this video. To discuss the concept of how Buffy the Vampire Slayer influences the new series of Doctor Who, I'm going to talk about the following. The backstory of Buffy and why it would influence Doctor Who. General influences over the style of the show. Influences over the structure of episodes of the series. Plot lines that could have been inspired or influenced by Buffy. Cast and crew that worked on both shows. How Torchwood relates to Buffy. Connections from other Doctor Who spin-offs to Buffy. References in Buffy to Doctor Who, genre connections that both shows share, and finally connections from Buffy creator Joss Whedon's other work to Doctor Who. Finally, I will not post spoiler warnings on Doctor Who plot points, as the show is too long and complex to avoid spoilers for everybody. But I will post a warning before spoiling anything significant from Buffy or Angel, as their storylines are better watched unspoiled. In 1989, after 26 years of programming, the classic series of Doctor Who ended unceremoniously. Its end was inevitable, but its return was not. When the series started again in 2005, there had been almost two decades of new, innovative genre shows whose influence on the new series of Doctor Who was large and obvious. The 1990s are perhaps the peak of American science fiction on the small screen, and produced a whole bunch of new, cult shows in science fiction and other genres like fantasy, horror and supernatural drama. Some of the most important and influential shows during this time frame are Star Trek The Next Generation, Babylon 5, The X-Files and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. These shows are critical in shaping modern genre television and Doctor Who in particular, and I may make videos in the future looking at the influence of each, but for now we'll concentrate on Buffy. Buffy the Vampire Slayer was a TV series created by the then relatively unknown Joss Whedon that was based on a script he would created for a movie of the same name. Ignoring many aspects of the movie, he launched the show in 1997 and it ran for 7 seasons. During Buffy's run, it garnered critical praise, a cult following and a 5 season spin-off called Angel. The show is a blend of many genres, balancing fantasy, horror, supernatural drama, comedy and science fiction, and tells the story of Buffy a teenage girl who is the Slayer, a superhuman granted powers in order to destroy the world's vampires. To understand why the show influenced Doctor Who, we must understand all the factors that influence the new series of Doctor Who. The three biggest factors are Doctor Who's classic series, modern television trends and the Doctor Who fan base. Obviously the classic series is a direct influence as it created the setting, concepts and characters we all know and love. The other two, however, have direct links to Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Modern television is influenced by those that came before, and in the realm of genre television, Buffy was one of the shows mentioned earlier who set precedents which then became the norm on shows like Doctor Who. The other primary influence is the Doctor Who fan base, who kept the series alive during the 16 year absence. These fans became the writers on the new series, in fact every writer during Eccleston's year as a Doctor had previously written a licensed comic, novel, audiobook or short story whilst the show was off the air. These fans adopted many conventions of the genre shows of the time, and many of the licensed products from the late 90s and early 2000s are directly influenced by then contemporary television. As these fans came to work on the show, it's clear their passion for shows like Buffy would also travel over. To begin discussing the influence of Buffy, it's worth providing evidence that there was some influence. Well, in 2009, 
AV Club asked New Who showrunner Russell T Davies what shows he had in mind when he relaunched Doctor Who. And he said, and I quote, Well, every well-written show, really. I mean, I love what Joss Whedon did with Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Another example of Russell T Davies' fondness for the show comes from a 2015 Radio Times interview with Anthony Stewart Head, who appeared in Doctor Who in 2006, where he stated that Russell T Davies said that he used Buffy as a model for when he was rebranding Doctor Who. And he goes on to say that Joss Whedon changed the face of sci-fi TV as a genre, I think, completely. These statements would definitely indicate that between 2005 and 2009, when Russell T Davies was showrunner, Buffy was a primary influence on Doctor Who. Regarding Stephen Moffat's tenure, he has been less forthcoming about admitting such an influence, saying in a 2008 interview with io9, that the moment you start making the show, you stop thinking of Buffy, you start thinking of Doctor Who. This would indicate less of an influence as Moffat became showrunner, which would be consistent with the influences I will note in this video. One influence that I think is noticeably apparent in the new series of Doctor Who is the use of dialogue. The new series is increasingly full of quips, cultural references and snappy lines of dialogue. These are my top operatives, the legs, the nose and Mrs. Robinson. I hate you. No, you don't. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, timey wimey stuff. Compensating? For what? Regeneration, it's a lottery. Oh, he's cool. Isn't he cool? I'm the doctor and I'm all cool. Oops, I'm wearing sand shoes. You... This type of speech is a notable aspect of Joss Whedon's work and the use of it in Buffy is very well known and established. Can I just say, Gah. I see your gear and raise you a nah. That's me as a vampire? You're so evil and skanky. And I think I'm kind of gay. Even with a soul, I've done things I wish a thousand times I could take back. Yeah, like those Manilow concerts. The classic series of Doctor Who had a fair few quips and witty dialogue, when we consider how many quotes from the new series are now emblazoned on fan sites and posters, and the show is now praised for its snappy dialogue, you have to wonder why this is not the case for the show pre-2005. Another aspect that might be influenced would be the use of ensembles. Buffy and Angel are never being ensemble shows, with the main cast of characters ranging from 3 to 8. The new series rarely has so many, but the number of recurring characters is higher than ever. We are introduced to more recurring, non-companion, non-villain characters during Russell T Davies era as showrunner than we are in the entire classic series. By expanding every companion's family and including episodes like Journey's End and A Good Man Goes to War which feature over 10 recurring characters each, the show establishes a closer universe with a reliable group of core characters that reappear on a frequent basis. There's also the fact that the new series spin-offs, such as Torchwood and the Sarah Jane Adventures, also have ensemble casts. Yet another example of a Buffy influence will be the use of what I call concept episodes. Buffy and Angel are well known for having a certain type of episode whose premise would be a simple concept, such as a silent episode, a musical episode, a puppet show episode, a dreamlike episode, etc. These would invert the show and tell a different kind of story to the usual episodes. Doctor Who has no such history. The classic series follow the pattern of TARDIS lands, Doctor fights bad guy, TARDIS leaves, pretty much for every story for 26 years. Now the show is filled with concept episodes. The episode about the Doctor, the what if episode, the dream episode, the found footage episode, etc. Sometimes a concept is even just a word or phrase, like blink or listen or deep breath. Let's not forget that series 7 is a series where every episode is a concept episode, with Stephen Moffat quoted as saying he told the writers to slut it up, with big huge mad ideas, and to write it like a movie poster. For better or worse, concept episodes are an idea from Buffy that seems here to stay. Another aspect that also matches Buffy and Angel is the tonal choices the show's made. Both balance comedy and drama very evenly, and the new series of Doctor Who attempts comedy in a similar way. In the classic series, comedy was either not particularly present, at the forefront of an episode, or done only by a couple of side characters. In the new series, far more characters joke and quip in almost every episode, and the show balances the tones in a similar way to how Buffy did. Finally, a very small but interesting point would be the use of settings in New Who. 
Buffy is set on present day Earth in a small town, and Angel is set in present day Los Angeles. Both of these are relatable settings one can identify with. The classic series of Doctor Who was varied in location, mostly taking place in the future, but often on contemporary Earth, but never too often in one place. Let's not forget, Hartnell, Colin Baker and McCoy only had a full story set in present day Earth twice each. By contrast, Eccleston had visited contemporary Earth twice in his first four episodes, Tennant also managed this in four, Smith in five, and Capaldi once again in four. The entirety of Eccleston's run takes place on Earth or on space stations nearby. These settings and the exploration of characters' family lives on Earth serves the purpose of creating a relatable setting. The same purpose of the setting in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Doctor Who's current structure, both within the episodes and as a whole series, reflects many aspects of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Some big changes in the new series compared to the classic series are clearly influenced by a lot of American television, and these would include the use of showrunners instead of classic series producers and script editors, the episodes being 45 minutes long rather than 25 minutes, the cast members getting credited in the opening titles, the reduction of the number of two-part stories in favour of one-episode plots, and each episode having a pre-credits opening and sometimes a previously on montage. All of these are aspects of many American shows, but let's not forget, Buffy also used these techniques and normalised aspects of some of them. One of Buffy the Vampire Slayer's biggest innovations is its use of a big bad series structure, whereby a series plot lines would be both episodic and serialised and have a chief villain called a big bad, who our heroes would face in the finale. In Buffy, this included villains like the Master, no not him, Mayor Wilkins and Glory. New series Doctor Who also follows this structure, if a little differently. Whereas in Buffy, these villains would be faced throughout the series and culminate in a big battle in the end, Doctor Who doesn't usually introduce the villains pre-finale. The series roughly aligns as Series 1 Daleks the Villains, Series 2 Cybermen, Series 3 The Master, Series 4 Davros, Series 5 Cracks in Time, Series 6, The Silence, Series 7, The Great Intelligence, Series 8, Missy, Series 9, Time Lords. As each series of Doctor Who now has one big villain, and also a recurring plot point which feeds into the finale, such as Bad Wolf, Mr. Saxon, or The Hybrid, we can observe that this structure very much matches that of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, especially in the first four series under Russell T. Davies. Many plot lines in Doctor Who post-2005 are similar to ones seen in Buffy and Angel, and often it wouldn't seem too far of a jump to assume some influence. Obviously, as I will be discussing plot points, if you don't want spoilers for Buffy, Angel or Doctor Who, please skip this section and move on to cast and crew. To begin with, there is one episode of the new series Doctor Who that we know was directly inspired by Buffy. The 2006 episode Love and Monsters was based upon the Buffy the Vampire Slayer season 3 episode The Zeppo. In fact, Russell T Davies said he was inspired by both The Zeppo and Star Trek The Next Generation's 7th season episode Lower Decks. All of these stories focus on less heroic characters whose adventure is minor compared to those of the main protagonists like the Doctor or Buffy. It seems to me that Love and Monsters is closer to Lower Decks than The, the Zeppo but it's interesting that Russell T Davies cited a Buffy episode as an influence. Another pair of episodes that are remarkably similar would be Buffy the Vampire Slayer's The Wish and Doctor Who's Turn Left. The similarities are striking. Both stories follow a character that was originally arrogant, selfish and self-centred but has mellowed a little since her introduction to the series. In Buffy this is Cordelia, in Doctor Who this would be Donna. They then talk to a stranger and inadvertently change an event that happened years prior. The world then becomes a hellish nightmare where Buffy and the Doctor respectively were not able to save the world. In Buffy, Giles manages to return the world to normal, whilst in Doctor Who, Rose is able to help Donna do the same. The fact these episodes follow a very similar structure and even have disasters prevented in previous episodes actually occur definitely suggests some form of inspiration. One plotline that recurs in Buffy and Angel 
is that of major protagonists becoming evil or being possessed or betraying their friends. Over a third of characters credited in the opening titles of Buffy or Angel are evil at some point throughout the series. When we look at Doctor Who now, the Doctor is a much tougher character and one who often does bad things for good reasons, much like many of the Buffy protagonists. A Good Man Goes to War and Journey's End are good examples of this. I want people to call you Colonel Runaway. I want children laughing outside your door because they've found the house of Colonel Runaway. And when people come to you and ask if trying to get to me through the people I love... Is it anyway a good idea? I want you to tell them your name. However, one of the most blatant is the Doctor's descent in the waters of Mars which strongly mirrors a confident, uncaring switch that happens to characters in the Buffyverse, like Willow becoming Dark Willow and Fred becoming Illyria. I'd like to have done this sort of thing before. In small ways, say some little people. But never someone as important as you. Oh, I'm good. Little people? What, like Mia and Yuri? Who decides they're so unimportant? You? For a long time now, I thought I was just a survivor, but I'm not. I'm the winner. That's who I am. The Time Lord Victorious. And there's no one to stop you? No. This is wrong, Doctor. I don't care who you are. The Time Lord Victorious is wrong. That's for me to decide. It is also worth mentioning that The Waters of Mars was co-written by Russell T Davies, who as noted above is a Buffy fan. On the point of Willow, whose descent into evil occurs because of, the, because of the death of her lover Tara, it is remarkably similar to Clara's betrayal of the Doctor in Dark Water, which also occurs because of a similarly non-fantastical death of her lover. One area of common ground comes from Angel seasons 3 and 4, which features a whole bunch of plot lines thrown up again in new series Doctor Who. The first would be the similarities between River Song and Angel's son Connor, and their storylines in Doctor Who series 6 and Angel season 3 respectively. The stories both follow a pattern. A pregnant character gives birth to a child who is different to everyone else. Then the child is kidnapped by those who hate our hero, Angel and the Doctor respectively. When our hero is reunited with the child years later, the child is now a teenager and has been brainwashed to try and kill them. Over time, these children will learn our heroes are actually good people. These eerie similarities between River and Connor continue, as River ends up sleeping with someone who her mother once tried to seduce, and Connor ends up sleeping with someone his father has feelings for. So yeah, that's a creepy similarity. However, throughout Angel Series 4, we stumble upon more similarities with Doctor Who, such as the importance of a name, so this high priest holds a true name. Which reflects the importance of the Doctor's name in Series 7. Doctor. What is your name? The introduction of a big red horned villain called the Beast, similar to the villain in the Satan Pit of Doctor Who Series 2, and also that Connor had his memory wiped at the end of Angel Season 4, similar to Donna at the end of Doctor Who Series 4, and the Doctor at the end of Series 9. Another noticeable aspect is the way characters now leave Doctor Who. In the classic series, companions almost always left the show on good, happy terms. It was because either they felt it was time to leave the TARDIS, or they fell in love. In fact, there was only six companions who don't fit this pattern, and were forced to leave the TARDIS or killed. Katerina, Sarah, Jamie, Zoe, Adric and Perry. The new series has more than six, despite running less than half as long. The idea of protagonists exiting the show in negative ways is a common feature of the Buffyverse. Main characters like Cordelia, Spike, Anya, Doyle, Fred, Wesley, Connor, Tara, Angel and even Buffy all die, have their memory wiped or get trapped in another dimension at some point throughout the two shows. When we look at the new series of Doctor Who, of the main companions only Marth are left on good terms. As for the others, Rose was stuck in another universe, Donna had her mind wiped, Amy and Rory were trapped in New York to die, and Clara dies, comes back to life, and has herself erased from the Doctor's memories. Let's also not forget that other minor companions like Jack and River leave the TARDIS due to death. 
The way people leave through altered memories, being trapped in places and dying, closely matches many of the ways characters exit in the Buffyverse. When we look at a show like Torchwood, the new series spin-off, we also have of the nine characters in the opening credits over the show's run, only four are alive at the end of the show, and two of them are immortal anyway. There's a good chance this is a tenuous link to the Buffyverse, but nonetheless remember that the high rate of main character death and suffering in the new series is completely at odds with the classic series, but very much in line with the nature of the Buffyverse. One aspect of the new series that sometimes goes unnoticed is its increased number of supernatural themed episodes, which matches Buffy's supernatural tone. Since Doctor Who's returned, we've had ghosts, a werewolf, Satan, witches, zombies, vampires, a siren, killer dolls, and ghosts again. This is more than the classic series yet again, and once more a possible Buffy influence. There's also the eerie similarity between the Doctor Who villains The Silence and Buffy's villains The Gentleman. They're both silent, both pale, both wear suits, and both creepy motherfuckers. Finally, one particular thematic thread in Angel has become part of Doctor Who. In Angel, our main character and plenty of others live to redeem themselves from the evil they've done and to keep on fighting. This is a core theme of the show. In the new series, a core plot point is a Doctor's involvement in the Time War and his attempts to redeem himself as the series goes on. This arc of redemption was never present in the classic series but post Angel, the new series adopted it. It is also worth noting that the removal of Gallagher from time in the day of the Doctor, and the fact that the Doctor cannot remember that he saved it, is similar to how Connor is removing people's memories in Angel, and also similar to Angel's time reset in the series 1 episode, I Will Remember You, which only he remembers. There's plenty of cast and crew in Doctor Who who have involvement in the Buffyverse and plenty more who have referenced it directly. The presence of such people indicates that those running Doctor Who are significantly aware of people involved in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and we then have to wonder how much of that awareness bleeds into their work. The most obvious example of a casting crossover is Anthony Stewart Head's involvement in the 2006 Doctor Who episode School Reunion. In Buffy the Vampire Slayer, he played the role of Rupert Giles for seven years, a school librarian and watcher and protector of Buffy. The casting of him as a school headmaster is no doubt intentional. Anthony Head has also had plenty of other work involving Doctor Who, such as voicing the main villain of the animated story The Infinite Quest, auditioning for the role of the Eighth Doctor in 1996, and narrating two series of Doctor Who Confidential, a 2006 Doctor Who novel adaptation, and a 2005 documentary called Project Who. Another cast member crossover is James Masters as the recurring role of Captain John Hart in Torchwood. He is of course a main cast member on both Buffy and Angel playing evil vampire Spike, whose personality has similarities to his Torchwood character. Torchwood Series 4, or Torchwood Miracle Day, which incidentally moved the show to America, in fact features many cast and crew members from Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel. Jane Espenson, who was hired as the Joint Chief Writer alongside Russell T Davies and wrote 5 of the 10 episodes. Jane Espenson is known for having written over 20 episodes of Buffy, as well as episodes of Angel and episodes of Firefly and Dollhouse also created by Joss Whedon. Along with her, the costume designer on Torch of Miracle Day was Shama Tripsick, who worked with Joss Whedon on Angel, Firefly, Dr. Horrible Sing Along Blog, Dollhouse and The Cavern in the Woods. In the acting department, Robin Sachs, who played recurring role Ethan Rain in Buffy, had a small role in Torture Miracle Day. And Elijah Dusku, who plays Faith in Buffy and Angel, had a major role in, in an online animated serial connected to the series. In the world of Big Finish, which produced licensed Doctor Who audio stories featuring original cast members and has employed the writing talents of new series writers like Mark Gatiss, Gareth Roberts and Robert Sherman, there's also a good deal of crossover. Juliet Landau, who plays Drusilla on Buffy, plays the third incarnation of Romana in the audio adventures in a recurring role. Anthony Head also appears in three audio books called the Excellis Trilogy, which he worked on while still being involved with Buffy. On a separate note, Amber Benson, who plays major character Tara in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, had a role in Big Finish's line of audio continuing the story of TV show Dark Shadows. Whilst this may seem unconnected, it shows awareness of the Buffy cast by the Doctor Who writers who work at Big Finish, 
many of whom have subsequently been involved in the show. Some miscellaneous but nonetheless interesting connections could also be that in the Doctor Who comic Space Squid, there's a character named Fillion, who is a likeness to actor Nathan Fillion, who appeared in five episodes of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Similarly, in the Buffy comic Twilight Part 1, comic artist George Ginty drew Buffy in an outfit similar to that worn by the character Jenny in the Doctor Who episode The Doctor's Daughter, as he was 99% sure Jenny was Russell T. Davis's homage to Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Finally, there's the interesting fact that after Buffy the Vampire Slayer stopped airing, Joss Whedon met Doctor Who producer Judy Gardner to discuss creating a new Buffy spin-off called Ripper as a co-production with the BBC. This long list of people with connections to both Buffy and Doctor Who further reinforces the idea that the people involved were influenced, either consciously or subconsciously, when they worked on Doctor Who. If there's one aspect of Doctor Who most densely packed with Buffy references, it's the fourth series spin-off, Torchwood, produced from 2006 until 2011. The most noticeable thing is that as a spin-off to Doctor Who, it shared many similarities to Buffy's own spin-off, Angel. Both shows were about an immortal character, leading a team of people to defeat evil within the city they lived. Both were considerably darker than their original shows, and both began with episodic plotlines and series, before adopting season-long stories which often followed on from one another. The main ensemble of Torchwood has many similarities to the setup on Angel. The characters of Jack on Torchwood and Angel on Angel were both immortal leaders of their respective groups. Angel was waiting for the chance to redeem himself, and Jack was working for the Doctor and trying to do good since he couldn't die. The team setup also shares similarities with Angel. For a good portion of Angel, the team had two intelligent, relatively bookish characters, Wesley and Fred, and two more down-to-earth, louder characters, Cordelia and Gunn. Torchwood has a similar setup with scientists Toshiko and Owen, and the essentially muscle of Gwen and Yanta. In particular, Toshiko is similar to Fred in that she was a science expert and had a shy, nervous personality. Some character points of notable similarity include, and spoiler alerts for Angel and Torchwood, in both shows, the immortal team leader falls in love with the character whose role is that of a glorified secretary. This is Jack and Yanto in Torchwood, as well as Angel and Cordelia in Angel. Also, the two scientists slash researchers also have a relationship which mostly goes unrequited. This is Toshiko and Owen in Torchwood and Fred and Wesley in Angel. In Angel, Fred dies and her body is resurrected as Illyria. In Torchwood, Owen dies and his body is resurrected as some sort of zombie as he remains dead but is still himself. Finally, Gunn joins the Angel team after they fail to save his sister, and Owen joins the Torchwood team after they fail to save his fiancée. These character points are perhaps stretching, but there's still some consistency between the Angel and Torchwood setup. And bearing in mind that the Torchwood ensemble was different to any previous Doctor Who ensemble, it's at least worth bearing in mind that perhaps Angel had some kind of influence. Some of the other connections between Torchwood and the Buffyverse include the similarity between weevils on Torchwood and vampires on Buffy. In both, they stalk the alleys and sewers for anybody they can attack, and they end up being cannon fodder enemies for our characters to battle. They even look similar. Another connection is that both Torchwood Miracle Day and the Angel episode A Hole in the World feature a giant hole that goes from one side of the earth to the other. There's also a similarity between the Buffy organisation The Initiative which is a government organisation dedicated to the supernatural, and Torchwood, which is a government organisation dedicated to the extraterrestrial. Also, both the Angel episode The Ring and the Torchwood episode Combat feature an exclusive club of people who watch fights involving creatures in some sort of caged ring. Another link is the reason for extraterrestrial activity happening in Cardiff is due to a special rift going through the city, which is almost identical to, to the Hellmouth located in Sunnydale, California, in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Finally, on the Torchwood website, it used to state that a creature put in stasis in the Torchwood morgue was an immortal vampire, that can reconstitute itself after it is dusted. It is worth noting that dusted is a terminology originating from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Doctor Who spin-offs also contain some influence from the Buffyverse and a good amount of references. One could say the school setting of much of the Sarah Jane adventures reflects a Buffy influence, 
and this seems especially true of the upcoming Doctor Who spin-off Class. The creator Patrick Ness has already cited Buffy the Vampire Slayer as an influence on Class, although he said it'd be different to Buffy in that it won't have a chosen one storyline. Whilst recording this video, I've just been made aware that the first episode of Class is entitled The Prom, which is also the name of the 20th episode of season 3 of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. One thing spin-offs have a lot more of than this show is references, and the Doctor Who novels and audio stories have plenty of references. Buffy the Vampire Slayer was directly referenced in the second Doctor short story Homework, the 8th Doctor novel Vampire Science, the 9th Doctor novel Winner Takes All, and the 11th Doctor novel The King's Dragon. In the Bernice Summerfield novel The Glass Prison, Buffy is said to still be broadcast in 2600, and some characters are mentioned to enjoy the show in the 5th Doctor audio drama The Eternal Summer. The only time a piece of Doctor Who fiction actually attempts to cross over with the Buffyverse is in the 8th Doctor novel Camera Obscura, where the character of William the Bloody Awful Poet makes an appearance in 19th century England and interacts with the 8th Doctor and his companions. William the Bloody Awful Poet is another name of the usually popular Buffy character Spike, and the novel takes place in a setting where he was known as such. This is the only example of a character crossover between the two shows. Although Buffy's location of Sunnydale is mentioned in the 8th Doctor novel The City of the Dead, and the Bernie Summerfield short story Possum Kingdom, although neither identify it as genuinely existing. One minor similarity between the two franchises is that in the Doctor Who comic Assimilation Squared, Rory uses his knowledge as a Roman centurion to bluff two guards into letting him pass, which is similar to a tactic used by the Buffy character Xander Harris in the episode Innocence. This is even more striking as both Rory and Xander receive such knowledge from an experience where they were supernaturally forced to become a soldier. Finally, one example of a single release having loads of Buffy references is the 2001 audio story Minuet in Hell, featuring the 8th Doctor and the companions Charlie Pollard and the Brigadier. It's not only set in the USA, but features an organisation dedicated to dealing with supernatural beings, and is headed by a young girl, similar to the Slayer's dynamic to the Watcher's Council in Buffy. The story also uses the phrase, Bored Now, which is used by Vampire Willow and Dark Willow in the Buffy episodes The Wish, Doppelgangland and Villains, although Villains was broadcast after the release of Minuet in Hell. To try and look at this from a different perspective, we can see some of the people involved in work on Buffy the Vampire Slayer were in fact aware of Doctor Who and perhaps fans. One interesting thing to note is the high number of British characters on Buffy and Angel. The major characters of Rupert Giles, Wesley Wyndham Price and Spike are all British. They are joined by lots of British recurring characters like Drusilla, Ethan Rain, Molly, Quentin Travers, Darla and Daniel Holtz. There are also the main characters of Irish origin, Angel and Doyle. The high number of characters born in Britain and Ireland means British is the number one nationality of main and recurring Buffyverse characters outside of American. This might have little to do with Doctor Who, but it just highlights the Anglophilia the creative team on Buffy might have had. In the show, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, there's two direct references to Doctor Who. In the season 6 episode, As You Were, the British character Spike refers to himself as the Doctor. I need to find a guy, dealer, calls himself the Doctor. And in another season 6 episode, Smashed, the main character Andrew Wells claims he's seen every episode of Doctor Who, which is impressive considering over 100 episodes were missing at the time. I've seen every episode of Doctor Who. In the Buffy comics, which continues the storyline after the show ended, there's also plenty of references. The 10th Doctor and Rose Tyler cameo in a panel of Buffy the Vampire Slayer Season 8, and David Tennant appears in the comic in perfect harmony. A Dalek figurine can also be seen in the Buffy comic strips Welcome to the Team Part 1 and I Wish Part 2. There are plenty of similarities in the shows that come about from being sci-fi and fantasy shows in general. For one thing, both shows have a very goofy and silly premise which is taken seriously by our characters and then used to create interesting stories. As a result, both shows have used concepts like vampires, fish-like people, 
evil puppets and an arch enemy called the Master. It's worth noting that in 1999, six years before Doctor Who returned to our screens, Doctor Who magazine was aware of such genre connections and ran an article about what shows like Babylon 5 and Buffy the Vampire Slayer had to offer Doctor Who fans. They decided to compare the Buffy episodes Becoming Part 1 and Part 2 with Doctor Who's 1989 story The Curse of Fenric. In fact, there are many similarities for both of these stories, which I will discuss with spoilers. The Curse of Fenric, for starters, features many plot points common in the Buffyverse, like an ancient language being decrypted, demonic looking vampires, and an evil entity that had previously been trapped in a flask. The Curse of Fenric is a story which is as much focused on the companion Ace as it is on the Doctor. In many regards, thinking of Ace as a major character shows links to becoming much more easily. The main premise of the return of a hugely evil entity is similar in both stories. In The Curse of Fenric, we are waiting for the return of Fenric, and in Becoming, we are waiting for Akafla, who will return via the evil Angelus. In both stories, the only reasons Fenric and Angelus have been allowed to get so far in their plans is because of our major characters. Fenric is allowed to win his chess match against the Doctor because Ace accidentally tells him the solution. And Angelus poses a threat to Buffy as he is a demon in possession of the one she loves. The biggest similarity though comes in the themes of both stories. In Becoming, Buffy must overcome her love for Angel in order to kill Angelus. And in The Curse of Fenric, Ace must lose faith in the Doctor in order to defeat Fenric. Ace's storyline about saving the mother she hated has some relevance to Buffy being forced to reveal her true abilities to her mother. Whilst these stories are not entirely compatible, the central idea of giving up on ones we love for the greater good is one distinctly shared by both, and I understand why Doctor Who magazine chose to compare them. Joss Whedon's work outside of the Buffyverse has had far less influence on Doctor Who, but there are still a couple of connections. On the acting front, Mark Shepard, who appeared in two episodes of Doctor Who series 6, also appeared in a few episodes of Joss Whedon's Firefly. Also, Tortured Miracle Day has a guest appearance by Deechen Lachman, who played a main character in Joss Whedon's Dollhouse and a recurring character on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Joss Whedon also wrote the film The Cabin in the Woods, whose premise is a satire on Cabin in the Woods style horror movies, a trope where a bunch of characters are stuck in a small cabin location and face multiple terrors, which is a horror equivalent of a common sci-fi trope of a base under siege which is frequently used in Doctor Who. This is referenced in Series 9 when during the Base Under Siege episode Under the Lake, the character Cass remarks that the Doctor is doing the cabin in the woods thing. Perhaps the biggest overlap is that both Joss Whedon and Doctor Who have huge Marvel Comics connections. Joss Whedon has both written for Marvel Comics and is responsible for a lot of major work in the current Marvel Cinematic Universe. Having written and directed both The Avengers and Avengers Age of Ultron, as well as co-creating the TV series Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Marvel has a long connection to Doctor Who, as the publishers of official Doctor Who comics for a long time in the 80s and 90s, with Doctor Who comic strips even appearing in comics like The Incredible Hulk Presents, and having direct crossovers with Marvel Universe locations like the Baxter Building. When we look at the enormous amount of links and connections between Doctor Who and Buffy the Vampire Slayer, we have to wonder how strong the influence is. Plenty of the links I've mentioned are tenuous and unlikely, but a good amount of them are backed up by evidence and logically sound. I'm recording this video on the 18th of September 2016, and I'm sure in the near future, with the spin-off show Class approaching, even more Buffy links will soon be seen. The more links we see, the more we see an influence. Referring to my points earlier, I think we can demonstrate that many Doctor Who cast and crew members were aware of Buffy and may have been influenced by it. With Buffy shaping a lot of modern television, it is perfectly possible that lots of connections were indirect and because of changes to TV in general, not specifically because of Buffy. To me, I think the show has definitely been influenced by Buffy, but it is by no means an overriding influence. The show is still original and clever and mostly inspired by the stories that came before on the show rather than on other television shows. 
it is undeniable at this point that Buffy had an influence, but it would be exaggerating to say it's particularly pervasive throughout the new series. I would like to add that other shows, comics and books have also influenced the show, but keep in mind that it appears that Buffy is probably the one unrelated franchise with the single most impact on new series Doctor Who. Thanks for watching. I really hope you found this video informative and if you did please leave a like or subscribe I'll be doing more video essays in the future hopefully. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on whether there's a connection between Buffy and Doctor Who so leave me a comment or leave me a suggestion for other video essays and reviews I could do in the future. Um, if you want to know my thoughts on things you can follow me on Twitter and if you want to know what movies I'm watching you can follow me on Letterboxd I'll put links in the description. I really appreciate you getting through this very long video and thank you once again for watching and just listening to me ramble.